Hello and welcome to video lecture series in political science. Today we are going to discuss chapter 1 titled as Cold War from your 12th class political science textbook Contemporary World Politics. For understanding we have divided this chapter into 6 parts. We have begun by general introduction to world politics and how world politics is different from IR or international politics. We have also learnt that how various events in this book are to be learned or seen in relation to one another. We have discussed about how the US entered the Second World War after attack on Pearl Harbor and how Second World War ended after dropping of atomic bombs on Japan. Today we will discuss about Cold War and the Cuban Missile Crisis. So far we have learned that after the end of Second World War the world got divided between two rival camps the division between the US and the USSR. This division between the two rival camps was based on the ideologies of capitalism and communism held by both of them respectively. US advocating capitalism and the USSR advocating communism. Now in the process of this rivalry both of them attempted to influence countries, smaller countries to align with them. Align means to stand with or believe in their ideologies. Both of them were constantly building up their military might as well. The Cuban Missile Crisis is one of the events during the Cold War that could have actually resulted in another war, that is the Third World War. What is this Cuban Missile Crisis? Let us understand this event in detail. What happened during 1961? The leaders of the Soviet Union were concerned that the US will invade communist Cuba. Cuba which was ruled by President Fidel Castro. Where is Cuba? Cuba is a small island nation near the east coast of US and it was a communist country and it was a close ally of the Soviet Union. Cuba used to receive financial and diplomatic aid from Russia. Now as you can see in the map Cuba is quite close to the southern eastern part of the United States. It is in the Atlantic Ocean. And as you can see in the picture, these are the leaders of the three nations involved in the Cuban Missile Crisis. This one is Fidel Castro. Fidel Castro was the authoritarian leader of Cuba and he was president of Cuba from 1976 till 24th of Feb 2008. This is the picture of Nikita Khrushchev. Khrushchev was premier of the USSR during the Cold War. And finally you see the picture of John F. Kennedy who was the 35th President of the United States. He was the President during the Cuban Missile Crisis. The Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev decided to make Cuba a Russian military base in 1962. What he did? He decided to place nuclear missiles in Cuba. The US came to know about the placement of these nuclear weapons in Cuba after three weeks of placement. The installation of these weapons in Cuba had put US for the first time in a danger zone which means that the US was now under the close and near range of fire by the USSR weapons or missiles. As you can see in the map that Cuba was quite close to the US territory and Florida was quite close to Cuba. So that is why it was a danger for the US for the first time that the American mainland was under the threat of a direct attack. So far America had enjoyed geographical isolation and it was never severely attacked other than the attack on the Pearl Harbor. As you can see the map shows the distance between Cuba and the mainland of the US. Now once again look at this map. This map is showing location of US, Cuba and USSR respectively. You can see how far USSR is on the right hand side of the US whereas Cuba is quite close. And if you see at the geography or the location of the US, it remained isolated because of the vast ocean expansion on both the sides. However, with installation of the missiles in Cuba, US for the first time came under the direct threat of any direct attack from major country. When the US President Kennedy came to know about the nuclear installations, he ordered American warships to intercept or stop any Soviet ship heading to Cuba. Although Kennedy and his advisors were very careful to avoid any full-scale war, particularly nuclear war, but they were also determined to stop Russia 
and ask Russians to remove missiles and nuclear weapons from Cuba. This strain or clash between the two is known as the Cuban Missile Crisis. Although it may look like, but the Cold War was not simply a matter of military alliance, balance of power or demonstration of power rivalries. But it was in fact a real ideological conflict where both of them were trying to put forward the ideology they advocated for as superior to the other ideology. This conflict was a difference of opinion over the best and most appropriate way of economic, political and social life in any nation or all over the world. But both of them were constantly building their military might also. And that was the reason both of them were being threatened by each other's military might. Briefly stating, the West headed by the US represented the ideologies related to liberal democracy and capitalism as political and economic organization. Eastern Bloc headed by the Soviet Union represented ideology of socialism and communism. In the process of asserting their respective ideologies, the USSR and the US emerged as two superpower, rivals to each other, with the capacity to destroy each other. But interestingly, they also understood that nuclear attack on each other would cause massive destruction and will prove costly for any of them to bear at costs. Thus, both the rival power, although had nuclear weapons that could have destroyed each other, but both of them understood the price they have to pay for holding this war. None of the sides wanted to take risk of war as the political gains from the war were far less and justified as compared to the destruction the war could have cost them or caused them. And in such a situation, it could have been impossible to declare any one side as winner in the event of the nuclear war. This negative motivation or negative motivational influence is called as logic of deterrence. The dictionary meaning of deterrence is that something that deters or restrains or stops. The concept of deterrence can be defined as the use of threats by one party to convince another party to refrain from initiating some course of action. It is a strategy for combining two competing goals. The first goal is countering an enemy and the second goal is avoiding war. In academics, it has been interpreted in various ways, but the basic concept of deterrence is quite simple. It means that an enemy will not strike if it knows the defender can defeat the attack or can inflict unacceptable damage in retaliation or cause equal if not more damage to you. In this case, both the US and the USSR had the capacity to retaliate against the nuclear attack and cause equal destruction to each other. So neither of them actually wanted to initiate war. Both of them knew that their major cities, their industrial towns and their important locations will be the target of the enemy. The enemy can even target their weapon storehouses. And if these points are attacked, nothing will be left in them. Thus the Cold War, despite being the intense form of military rivalry between the two superpowers, remained a cold war only. The reason why do we call it as a cold war is that because it never got converted into a shooting war, also called as a hot war. The cold war era was full of tension, anxiety and strains, but the logic of deterrence prevented any full-fledged war. Somehow fortunately enough, both the power blocks acted rationally and responsibly and they understood the risk of military war. In this sense, the Cold War managed to ensure human survival and avoided destruction. Now let us look at the dynamics of emergence of these two power blocks. The two powers had a group of nations aligning with them. Wherever a nation was tied to a superpower, it remained under the protection of the superpower to limit or control the aggression or the influence of the rival bloc. You may think that why did small states align themselves with the superpower? The answer is that smaller states in the alliance joined the superpower for their own interest and purpose. 
what was this interest this interest was that with aligning of superpower in return of their association with superpower the smaller states got promise of protection they got military help weapons equipment and also economic aid to counter their local rivals that is the regional neighbors with whom they had their competing differences the east west divide on the basis of ideologies and alliances with the two power blocks appeared first in europe the countries of the western europe were part of the western alliances and the countries of the eastern europe joined the soviet group that is why they are also called as western and eastern alliances the east west alliance system headed by the two superpowers divided the entire world into two camps in general and europe in particular in fact europe became the main arena of conflict between the two superpowers the superpowers were constantly calculating their gains and they were continuously in a struggle to bring smaller states into their ambit or under their fold after the end of second world war the western alliance or the western bloc was established as an organization called as nato that is north atlantic treaty organization nato came into existence on 4th of april 1949 the organization was a system of collective defense where each state agreed to mutual defense in response to an attack on any party by another state the member state declared that an armed attack on any one of them would be regarded as an attack on all of them and in such a case each member state is obliged to help the other On the other hand the eastern alliance was established by the Soviet Union through the Warsaw Pact. Warsaw Pact was signed in 1955. Its main aim was to counter NATO's forces in the west part of the Europe. It was a political and military alliance established in 1955 between Soviet Union and Eastern European countries. The members of the Warsaw Pact were Soviet Union obviously, Albania, Bulgaria, Czechoslovakia, East Germany, Hungary, Poland and Romania. The world got sharply divided between the two alliances or two blocs. And this rivalry or this divide was visible almost in every walk of or sphere of life, political, economic, military, nuclear threats, etc. The Soviets formed their alliance to counter NATO and NATO was here to contain the spread of communism. Now let us look at the map of Europe to identify the countries of Eastern and Western alliances that is NATO and Warsaw Pact. As you can see in the map the country of the Warsaw Pact are Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Belarus, East Germany and this side of the red line that is you can see in the map. Whereas the NATO countries are shown in blue color. Now this particular map shows the way the Europe was divided into two rival alliances during the world war. The countries in the red color are part of the eastern alliance and the countries which are shown in yellow color these are the countries of the western alliance that is the NATO members. The red ones are the Warsaw Pact members. The green one are the countries which are communist nations but they were not part of the Warsaw Pact. and the ones you see in grey color they are the other countries those who were outside of both the alliances now if you look at the map of europe the two colors blue and red show you a sharp distinction between east and west alliance the blue ones being part of the us alliance and the red ones being part of the russian alliance take a look at the world map the entire expanse almost half of the earth was covered by the countries of the warsaw pact headed by russia advocating the communist ideologies and now if we fill in the color of the other countries we see the dark blue countries being nato members the light blue countries being other allies to the us they were not the members of the nato organization but they were aligning with the interest of the us the red countries are the warsaw pact countries whereas the lighter red ones are the countries which were socialist countries they aligned with ussr but they were not part of the warsaw pact and the countries that you see gray in color were the non aligned countries we'll discuss about non alignment in the course of discussion of this chapter 
To conclude, let's summarize what we discussed in this episode. In this episode, we discussed about the Cuban Missile Crisis, the entire history, the set of instances or events that led to development of Cuban Missile Crisis during the Cold War era. We also discussed about the moves made by the USSR and the counter moves made by the US. The geographical location of Cuba vis-a-vis -vis the US and the location of USSR. We discussed about the division of the world in East and West Bloc or the Eastern or Western alliances called as Warsaw Pact countries or the NATO members respectively. In the next part of this chapter, we will discuss about Iron Curtain and about the two power blocks and their influence on the world politics. Till then, you can enjoy reading this part of the chapter. Thank you. Hello and welcome to video lecture series in political science. Today we are going to discuss chapter 1 titled as Cold War from your class 12th political science textbook Contemporary World Politics. For understanding we have divided this chapter into 6 parts or sections. We have begun by general introduction to world politics and how world politics is different from international relations or international politics. We have discussed about the second world war attack on Pearl Harbor and dropping of atomic bombs by the US on Japan. We have discussed about the Cuban Missile Crisis and the Cold War and the concept of deterrence that avoided a full-scale war between the two rival blocs. We have also discussed about the establishment of NATO and the Warsaw Pact and how both these organizations divided the world into two power blocs. Today we will discuss about the emergence of two power blocks in detail. We will discuss about Iron Curtain and the influence of superpowers over the respective block or the countries aligning with them. Now so far we have seen that after the end of second world war, the world got divided between two rival blocks headed by the two superpowers that is the US on the western side and the USSR on the eastern side. This east-west divide was on the basis of ideologies and alliance with the two power blocks. Now the alliance or aligning with the two power blocks appeared first in Europe. The US and those who aligned with it were called as the part of western alliances or those together formed NATO. The NATO members on the west side in contrast to the members on the east side those who were bound together by the Warsaw Pact and Warsaw Pact was called as the Eastern Bloc. Now interestingly Europe became the main arena of conflict between these two superpowers. The division also appeared on the geography or map of Europe. This divide between east and west of Europe is called as Iron Curtain. This Iron Curtain ran through the middle of Europe dividing it clearly between the two rival blocs under the occupation of two superpowers. We have already discussed the difference between the two was grounded in the ideologies, the ideological war over the principles of capitalism or communism and both of them advocated that capitalism or communism is the best form of socio-economic or political organization. Now let us look at this map. This red line as shown in the map of Europe is the Iron Curtain. The countries on the eastern side are the part of Eastern Bloc or the Warsaw Pact and the countries on the left hand side of this red line are part of the, not all of them but most of them part of the NATO alliance but they were part of the Western Bloc. Some of the countries were also neutral on the western side but yet they were on the west side of the Iron Curtain. Now. If we look at this map which shows in greater detail, this red line is the iron curtain that runs through the 
geography or the territory of Europe. And you can see the countries pink in color are the part of Union of Social Socialist Republic or under it, under its influence. And the countries in green color are on the Western Alliance. Now, this map particularly is of great importance. This shows, again, once again, the red line shows the running of Iron Curtain from north to the south of Europe. But it is interesting to note that the continent of Europe and the nations within it got divided between east and west. But Germany particularly, if we talk of Germany, Germany got divided into east and west Germany. As you can see it in this picture, the red line runs through Germany, where the eastern Germany is smaller in size, in structure or in terms of territory area and west Germany being bigger part of it. Now the darkest green is the territory gained by the USSR in the 1945. The middle green color is the countries which were under the control of the communist regime. And the darkest green is the Yugoslavia, that is the communist but independent which was not part of it. And the red line is the Iron Curtain. The entire country was either on the right or left hand side of the Iron Curtain. But it was in the case of Germany that was the center or the epicenter of the Second World War that got divided between, Germany itself got divided between East and West. And we later on learn that how Germany got united when Iron Curtain fell. The term Iron Curtain had been used earlier as well, since the 19th century. But the term gained prominence only after it was used by the former British Prime Minister Winston Churchill. Churchill in a speech at Fulton, Missouri on 5th of March 1946 said, that from Staten in the Baltic to Trieste in the Adriatic Sea, an iron curtain has descended across the continent. It implied the divide between the east and west part of the Europe. In order to assert their superiority, the superpower were also continuously calculating their gains and they were in a constant struggle to bring small states in their ambit. Because of the association with the superpower, the smaller states also got military help. They got promise of protection, weapons, equipment and economic aid to counter local rivals within their own region. That is the regional neighbors with whom they had competing and often conflicting or strained relations. Now let us look at the formation or emergence of two power blocks. Europe was devastated by years of conflict during World War II. Millions of people were killed or wounded in the world war. The only major power in the world that was not much damaged because of the war was the US, the United States. It was geographically isolated and the center of the war was located in Europe. So US enjoyed a distance. Industry and residential areas in most of the cities in Europe, particularly in England, France, Germany, Italy. Poland, Belgium and elsewhere were ruined, they were destroyed. Much of the Europe was on the brink of famine as agricultural production had also been disrupted because of war. Infrastructure Example, rail and road or transportation was in shambles. Now officially known as European Recovery Program ERP, the Marshall Plan was intended to rebuild the ruined economies of Western Europe primarily. It is known as Marshall Plan because of the name of the US Secretary of State, George C. Marshall. In 1948, Marshall issued a call for a comprehensive program to rebuild Europe. Marshall was convinced that the key to restoration of political stability of the world lay in revitalization of national economies of Europe. Further, Marshall saw that political stability in Western Europe is a key to counter the advancement of communism in this region. So he advocated for an economic aid or package to Europe. This is called as Marshall Plan. Now Marshall Plan nations were offered great assistance in their efforts for economic recovery after the damage or devastation of the world war. As a result of Marshall Plan or economic aid that was given to them, from 1948 up until the middle of the 1950s, European economies grew at an unprecedented rate. Their trade relations led to the formation of North Atlantic Alliance as well. 
so all of them were working together with each other and within themselves to overcome the misery that the world war had caused to them this economic prosperity came as a result of economic aid offered by the us called as marshall plan this also led to the revival of coal and steel industry in europe with the revival of coal and steel industries what happened european union what we know as european union today came into existence the number of european countries came together to help each other economically and to prosper together in some cases the aid given by the superpowers was economic in nature and in some cases it was military in nature for example the soviet union used army in the eastern europe region to ensure that this region remains under the sphere of the influence of the soviet union only the soviet union also had close relationships with china vietnam north korea and iraq because they were also inclined towards the communist form of government on the other hand the us also intended to extend its sphere of influence and in september of 1954 the us formed cto that is south east asian treaty organization cto was formed along with france great britain new zealand philippines thailand and pakistan the purpose of this organization was to prevent the spread of communism in these regions wherever the countries were coming from although the organization was called as cto that is southeast asian treaty organization but only two southeast asian countries became its members despite being located at different geographical regions in the world the other member countries like france great britain new zealand philippines they had their specific interest for joining this organization because they were being part of the western alliance where they had access to economic aid and other kind of facilities similar to nato that is north atlantic treaty organization another regional organization was established by the us bloc this organization was called as cento central treaty organization it is also known by many other names such as the middle east treaty organization or baghdad pact in 1955 This was formed in order to counter the moves of the USSR in this region. Center was composed of Turkey, Iran, Pakistan and the United Kingdom. Until the March 1959, the organization was known as the Middle East Treaty Organization, including Iraq, with its headquarters in Baghdad. Now, like all other organizations, NATO, CATO, etc., Cento committed the nation states or the member states for mutual cooperation and protection as well as the policy of non-intervention in each other's affairs that is they'll cooperate with each other they'll protect each other but they'll not interfere in the internal matters or affairs of the member states or the member countries Cento was dissolved in 1979 Now at this stage one may question that the superpowers were already powerful because they had nuclear weapons with them and they had big armies then why did they need allies at all or for what reason they brought number of smaller countries within their own ambit in fact the superpowers were so powerful that they were more powerful than the combined power of most of the small states in asia africa and even some of the countries of europe the smaller states together or individually were no match to or could not even think of competing with the power of the superpowers we have already discussed that why did they align with the superpowers because they wanted some aid economic military or otherwise but still despite being so powerful why did superpowers look for alliance the answer is that the smaller states were helpful for the superpowers to have access to some important things what were these important things the first one is the territory territory where the superpowers can station their military equipment they can install their weapons and troops to launch attack on the other you remember you have seen already the location of cuba very near to us where Russia or the USSR had installed nuclear missiles. The second important reason is that 
smaller states gave them access to vital resources they got vital resources from smaller countries in return of the security from the regional rivals the superpower gave them protection and the smaller states gave them access to resources such as oil mineral raw material etc the superpowers also got access to the location or the territory from where they could secretly keep an eye on the movement of the other superpower the need to strengthen the sphere of influence was important from the ideological reason as well or the ideological perspective as well because the growing number of allies and their loyalty was an indicator that a particular superpower was winning the war of ideology on one hand it showed that the liberal democracy and capitalism were better than socialism and communism in the us dominated areas and the opposite is true in the eastern bloc that is communism and socialism are better than democracy and capitalism both the powers were helping and supporting nations economically militarily and otherwise in order to gain their loyalty and spread their sphere of influence but despite all this help given to each other there were general tensions prevailing all over the world The Cuban Missile Crisis is one such example of several crises that occurred during the Cold War. Both the superpowers were flexing their muscles. They were trying to show their might, military might to each other at the same time in different regions of the world. And they were also building their military capacity constantly, secretly also and openly as well. During the Cold War era, quite a number of small military wars or conflicts happened world over. they were supported by both the superpowers or they were backed by in the sense that superpowers were giving them money military equipment and troops as well to fight these wars in the regions wherever they were occurring but fortunately enough none of these smaller wars became or led to another world war to conclude let's summarize what we discussed in this episode today we discussed about the division of world into eastern and western bloc We discussed about the iron curtain that ran through the Europe and divided Europe into East Europe and West Europe. The division on the basis of the ideologies held by both the superpowers and how they divided countries of Europe into two different sets. We also discussed about the moves made by USSR and the counter moves made by the US. We discussed how Marshall Plan helped in the recovery of shattered European economy after the Second World War. and we discussed about why did small states align with superpowers and what did superpowers get in return of their protection that they are giving to the smaller state from the smaller states in the next part of this chapter we'll discuss about vietnam war and afghan invasion by the soviet army and we'll also discuss about some of the treaties and agreements between the two superpowers and other nuclear countries to ban use of nuclear weapons till then you can enjoy reading this part of the chapter thank you